Thanks for tuning in to the Dove Vision Experience Podcast. Your boy Frank Nitty. I'm back for another episode. I want to say thank you to each and every person who gave me the opportunity to share with you my thoughts, my opinion about what's going on in our world, what's going on in our culture. Because you know, as you know, I like to do these mini series within the podcast. Man, this, you know, I'm talking about the snowfall series, man. If you guys haven't been watching it, please give it the opportunity, tap into it, watch some of the previous seasons, then come back and watch, watch this one I got for you, man. As you guys know, man, this season has been kind of, you know. Fairly good so far. I think the writers have been doing, you know, okay. But I think they kind of hit the hit the wall and they're starting to create their things from their imagination to make this show just, you know, pop a little bit. But at the same time, get away from what it's truly been about, you know, from seasons one to four. You know, we last, as you guys know, last episode they got, you know, the tiger incident. They, you know, they kind of ended it with that, and we kind of coming back with this next episode, wondering what's going to happen with the tiger. So, of course, they used their imagination and they gave us, a, you know, a wild moment with the tiger. And that was OK. But for me, I, I thought it was just a little bit of a stretch. I was like, OK, these these writers, they're doing a little bit too much right now. It's kind of getting away from the essence of the show, you know, where he was, you know, Franklin was all about building, creating, creating new um, new streams of revenue, you know, doing the real estate deals, trying to, you know, make a big, large place so he can eventually get out of the game. And then all of a sudden, he hit us with this tiger scene. You know, as they kicked the episode off, you know, we wanted to know, of course, like what's going to happen with Oso and uh, Franklin in the in the cage. We want to know that. So, of course, they're going to give it to us. So, but the things that like happening, you know, around that whole situation, it just really didn't add up to what the show was about. You know, I have my my thoughts, and my opinions about that. You know, even though I thought it was a good play on the screen, but then when I think about a little bit deeper about the show, I want to like. Okay, so what did this have to do with anything? So, of course, they're stuck in the cage and, you know, the guy comes out and he basically wants to, you know, play with them or feed them to the tiger. But instead of that happening, you know, also did a, a, a nice little, he was always thinking. He was always thinking, how can we possibly get out of this cage? What would it take for us to get out of this cage? You know, whereas Franklin was trying to talk his way out of the cage. So we automatically knew, well, I automatically knew he was going to go to let, let me try to figure out how much I can give this man. Like, let me see if, see if he'll take some money, see if this if this will get us an opportunity to try to get him out, get us out of the cage by, hey, I got money. So it's the first thing you hit him with, hey, I got lots of money. You know, I got I can get you money right now. You just got to let us out to go get it. And so the guy, he doesn't really care about money. He's not really thinking about that. So, you know, also before the guy came out, he had his belt. He took it off and he wrapped it around the 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 latch of the the cage that they were in. And nobody really knew what that what he was doing. So we was like, oh, man, he just did that. I'm like, okay, what, what is, whatever he's doing. But what we did know that that was the, the opening between the cage where they were and where the tiger was. So the guy went to lift the cage. He went to wind the crank to lift the door up so the tiger can get into him and eat him up. And so it didn't lift up. And we was like, oh, okay. So that's why, that's why he did that. So that made the guy who was there, we never even got his name. That's 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 how crazy the writing of the show is. We never got his name. We never knew who he was or what he was about. So he decided to get on the ladder and climb to the top of the, the cage so he can lift the cage up manually. And as he's climbing and he gets on the top of the cage and he lifts the to try to lift the door, also grabs onto the top of the cage and he rears and he kicks the door. And what that does, it makes the man slip. And he slips and his leg goes through the, the cage, one of the cage bars, and the tiger jumps up, grabs his leg, and gnaws it off. And in that moment, the keys fell out of his pocket. Of course they did. The keys fell out of his pocket. But they fell in a, port, a place where they couldn't really put their arm under the gate and reach it. So what also had to do, he had to lift up the door, take the belt off the door, lift up the door, and Franklin was able to get under there, grab the key, and get him out the cage. So we look, we had the scene where he looked back, and we was like, okay, he's, he's gnawing, the tiger is eating the leg, and the cage door is still open. So they kind of just leave, and we, they kind of show us that scene. He leaves, they leave the gate open, and then they close the gate to the backyard. And as they're going outside, they're looking like, all right, man, we're out. Like, we got to get out of here. Let's try to find us a car real quick. Let's try to get out. And so as they're, as they're coming out the, down the street, of course, the guys who have been looking for them, he's, he's been looking for them, um, they're basically, you know, they, they, they try to get the money from them that they were running from the first time that they, why, the reason why they hid under the house, still out there looking for them. So they duck down beside our car, and they're like, all right, man, we're going to check a car. And immediately as they, the car passes by, another car comes down the alley, and they run out and try to pull a piss out. And, of course, it's the guys that actually was chasing behind them. Come on, writers. Like, can we can we do a little bit better? Can we get a little bit better than this, man? We This is just too forced, and it just it seems like it's just like you guys are just doing too much right now. So, of course, they get, they get 
you know, snatched up. They just got the cage, and then all of a sudden they've been gone all night. And then all of a sudden the, the one car that they try to go jack is the guys who've been looking for them. So they throw them in the trunk, take them back to the shop, tie them up, of course, put the duct tape on them, and they're gonna try to beat them out of beat it out of them that they're trying to find that money. So of course, you know, Oso and, and Franklin, they don't want to give it up. They don't want to give it up. And so they start beating on them, and you know how that goes, a little supposedly torture session. And so Franklin is actually doing something in his mind. He's like, man, what can I do? What can I do? And so he thought about it. Okay, man, I can take it to the money. And the guy's like, okay, where is it? He was like, man, I don't know. It's just some houses that we were in. I can go take you to it. And so my mom's like, man, he's going to take him back to the house where the tiger is, of course. But all while this is going on, we know that, you know, Jerome and, the family, they're back at the club and they're trying to figure out, man, what happened to what just happened and 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 how did they get out of this? Like what what's going on? So we gotta find Franklin. And I've been feeling like, man, that Jerome, they've been kind of, you know, holding Jerome back. Cause I know he's been wanting, he's been itching to beat somebody up. He's been itching to whoop somebody. So they're trying to figure out like who did this to them. So they go to the one of the two guys that they normally do the drops with. And of course, the guy gets out of the car. They meet up in the parking lot. The guy gets out of the car. And he's on one already. And he just don't know Jerome fired up. Jerome ready to go. And so Jerome's just like, hey, you know what I'm saying? Uh, us Lewis like, hey, you guys, it, it was a, a big a big hit going on. It's going to be a lot of people talking. You know, can you know you guys keep your ears to the street? And, of course, the guy there, he doesn't really care. You know, he's always like, where's the drop? I'm like, he's like, man, you're going to get the drop when we give you the drop. And Jerome's like, listen, you're going to get it when we give it to you. And the guy was like, man, you know, if you guys were a little bit more, you know, a little bit more uh, uh, on our page or, you know, you weren't talking so sideways to people, basically, you know, you, you'll have more information. And so in that moment, Jerome just haul off and just fires off on the guy, you know, just you know, hit him in the jaw, knock him to the ground and just start pounding on him. I'm talking about blood going everywhere. And Jerome just taking out all that frustration from the shooting, from the cop, everything. He's just taking, they finally let Jerome, let, let, let that beast out of Jerome. Beats the guy up as he beating him up. Lou, of course, pulls the pistol out on the other guy like, hey, you know, you just stand there. Don't do nothing. Don't do nothing. And so Jerome gets up off the guy. He's bloody. He's knocked out blood out of his mouth. And Jerome just like gets back in the car. Teach your man how to squabble. Next time, get the trigger. And you can just see that. That was just such a funny scene as Jerome's getting in the car, pulling off, just saying that, teach your man how to squabble. And that's one of those words they talked, you know, used to use back in the day, how Jerome been just pounding on that man. But it was, it was a good scene to just see Jerome definitely get the opportunity to uh, to just get that get that out of his system because he's been trying to get, he's been itching to, itching to beat somebody up, man. Itching to beat somebody up. So we get back to, we get back to, uh, Franklin, of course, you know, he's he got the bright idea. He's going to take him back to the house where the guys are. And so he's like, all right, come on, let's get in the car. Oso, you stay here with me. And so and oh, in that moment, Oso like knows that like if Franklin leaves, man, they're probably going to kill me. I probably won't see anybody else again. So Franklin jumps in the car. They drive back to the house. Of course, they're going back to the house where the tiger is. The tiger, in my mind, I'm already knowing what's about to happen. But I didn't, I'm just like, okay, let me go through the motion with it. Hopefully they don't do what I think they're going to do. So he goes to the, he, they, they get the two guys, they're leading them in the back. They go going through the house, going to the backyard, open the gate, go inside. Franklin's tied up with his hands, his hands cuffed. He's saying, hey, look, man, the money's in the back in the garage. And the guys, the guys kind of looking around like, man, what's, what's going on back here, man? He's like, man, you go get the money. He was like, nah, it's in the back, in the garage back there. And the guy's kind of looking and seeing, oh, he see the man that's laying on top of the cage and he see the blood everywhere. And in that moment, he's like, man, what's going on here? He put the he put the gun and said, where the money at? And of course, the tiger jumps out of the cage. I mean, say the tiger jumps out of nowhere and attacks the second guy. Of course, I knew this was going to happen. We knew the tiger was going to jump on somebody. It didn't hit. It didn't jump on on Franklin, of course. So it hits the second guy, jumps on him. The guy with the pistol fires off at the tiger. Franklin hits him in the back of the head. Hit him. Get the pistol from him. Pistol whip him a quick minute. Runs while the tiger's actually gnawing on the both of those guys now. Goes back to the car, pull the pistol on the little kid that was that was still driving. Put him in the trunk. Go back to the shop where Oso was and, and basically free Oso, man. And, and just basically get Oso out the. Oh, he doesn't even leave. He leaves Oso there. I'm sorry. He leaves Oso there. And now he goes to the payphone and he beeps, he beeps Leon and he beeps Jerome. And he had them guys to let him know where he at. Called him, tell him to come pick him up. 
So, of course, Jerome and Leon, they're juiced to kind of know that Franklin's all right. The family knows that Franklin's all right. They go to pick him up. And so what they do now is they go back to the shop. And they already know, he's like, okay, what's going to happen, man? He's going to have to kind of put these two guys down who's actually watching Oso because Oso's talking to them too. He's like, man, they asked him, Oso, how much how much money was in the bag? He was like, three million. He was like, man, I don't know if they coming back. And so, so Oso is putting this doubt in their mind, those two guys' mind, letting them know, like, these guys might not even be coming back with you guys, man. And so they're starting to think, like, man, man we got to go. We got to go see where they at. And so they see the car pull up, which they don't, they think is their boys, but it's actually Leon and Franklin and uh, Jerome coming back to get Oso. They open up the door. Jerome hit the guy with the pistol, lay him down on the ground. Oso in that moment is like, hit that, like, like that Denzel meme is like, oh. Man, they came back to get me. He didn't realize it. He didn't think they were gonna. He didn't think Franklin was gonna come back. He just thought Franklin was gonna leave him there. But instead, Franklin comes back. You know, take the take the tape off of him. You know, drags him in the car. They 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 pop. They they drive off back to the to the club. So everybody's back at the club. They all excited. They all happy for him. You know, the family's there waiting on him. But during that time, while they you know while while that was happening, you can see uh, Sissy and Franklin's girlfriend. They was at the bar and they was talking. And she's just kind of hitting them with and, and sissies. We already know that sissies kind of got a, sister, a situation right here where she's going after, you know, she's going to go after Teddy. And so she's going to use this. Some She's trying to be some type of informant. They try to get her to, you know, be some type of informant where she's got to put the pen in so they can listen to all this business. So she got all that going on while this actually is happening as well. So she's talking to the girlfriend and know, like, look, man, I'm all for my son. You know, I knew he was at this business, but I'm all about having my son and being safe with him. You know, but I've been trying to get him out this game at some, for a long period of time. I don't know what he's going to do, but he's got to get out of here. And so she's and she's giving him this talk and kind of putting fear in the, the girlfriend head. The guys come through the door. She's got that on her mind. The guys come through the door. Everybody's super excited. And they're trying to figure out, man, who did this to him? And they're like, first thing come up. Peaches and Jerome, because Jerome kind of uh, recruited Peaches, he doesn't want to see anything happen to Peaches. He don't, he doesn't want to believe it, so he's still taking up for him. He's like, man, it ain't Jerome, it ain't it ain't Peaches, it ain't Peaches ain't do this. But of course, Peaches has been missing since this whole thing went down. You know, I initially thought that Peaches, you know, might have been sick. You know, at first I thought he was on the, he was on the powder. Then I thought, you know, he was actually having, you know, he was getting sick from having HIV. You know, these were just my theories of him being not being with the crew. And so, you know, with him going, with all this going down, everybody's pointing at Peaches. Nobody wants to believe that Peaches doesn't have anything to do with it except Jerome. Jerome's like, look, man, it's not Peaches. So, of course, you know, everybody's trying to, you know, piece this thing together, trying to figure out what's going on. And, you know, as as Franklin's girlfriend is kind of like she's just overwhelmed with everything. She's like, I'm going to go home. And Franklin's like, look, I'm going to send a driver with you. She was like, nah, I'm going to go by myself. And I'm like, in my mind, I was like, who just goes through the shootout knowing that the knowing that the the crews whoever try to hit you guys are after you guys and you're going to just drive home by yourself? And I'm like, man, what is she doing this for? Like, I still got my doubts about her. You know, first of all, I want to know if she's actually pregnant. And then, two, I want to know, is she really working in some type of informant, some type of game on Franklin? Because there's no way, you know, she wants to drive home by herself after everything that just happened. All the shooting that went on. Franklin being missing, the family's being a disarray, like the whole business has been, you know, shot at, and she wants to drive home by herself. So he wants to do a driver with her. She doesn't want to take the driver, so he allows her to go home. Hey, look, I'll see you later. And so everybody's now trying to figure out, okay, 